Today's chat is brought to you by, well, all of your support. Through the patronage you provide the Focus Fire chat team through Podbean's crowdfunding, we are able to provide you with the weekly podcast as well as the website and other aspects of Focus Fire chat. If you have any interest in becoming a patron of the FFC, please be sure to visit our website and click on the support link. Even a single dollar helps, and for those of you who are already patrons, thank you again for your generosity. Welcome to FFC Top 3, a show where we, your FFC hosts, count things down from 3 to number 1. Thank you for joining us this week. If you have a suggestion for a topic for Top 3, hit us up in all the normal locations on Twitter, in Discord, at focusfirechat at gmail.com. Even at, if you go to the Lore Network, you can contact us through there as well. This week, we are going to discuss our Top 3 Entertainers, which is a pretty broad category, I realized when I started thinking about it. So it's like, okay, here we go. This this might be too broad of a category. It may have been just right. We'll find out. But joining us this week in the hot seat is Ted. Ted Robinson. Hello. He is going to join us, Professor Ted. Would you like to go first? Sure. What is your number three? My number three, I also realized that this was kind of broad, so I tried to, like, divvy it up in interest that I have. So, Mm -hmm. number three, I put Gordon Ramsay. I think he's just fascinating to watch on every different show that he's in. Just Mm -hmm. different sort of personality type every, every show. You've got, you know, the Hell's Kitchen and Kitchen Nightmares where he can kind of be a beast. But then you go to the things like Master Chef or Master Chef Junior, where he's a lot more patient and a lot more kind, and you can the really tell. The shows that are got, so cute. Yeah, they are, and you can really tell that he cares about what he's doing, and uh, he cares about other people who are wanting to learn from him. And I thought that was pretty cool, and he's just entertaining to me. Yeah, I like him as well. I think he is definitely one of those, he knows his characters. Yeah. And he knows he knows that side of himself, and he knows when he needs to pull it back. Because with the kids, I think there was an episode, uh, I, I wasn't Cupcake Wars, it was one of those kids, kids cooking shows, and the little girl started crying, and he was just like, no, you are doing great. You are, like, way better than you think you are. It's just... Yeah. Just a just a step back. It's just you got to keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. And it was really nice to see him kind of take a more parental m- mode for it. Yeah, I agree. Even in even in like um, the adult version, the the Master Chef, where um, it's more like home chefs, not people who like proclaim to be kitchen chefs or sous chefs or anything like that. Um, they, he's got a lot more of a patience for them. Like if they don't know how to do anything. Yeah, absolutely. He is just kind of an interesting entertainer just all around in that respect. Uh I would be hard pressed to like, I don't know if I'd want to go watch him live because I figure he seems like such a private guy in some respects. Like he's not an over actor and he doesn't perform. He just does his thing. Right. Right. Which is kind of cool. All right, Blue, what is your number three? Uh, My number three is actually Ryan Reynolds, uh, just simply because I find that he's just rather hilarious. Um, And, like, if you follow him in, like, social media or stuff like that, he's just, like, he just acts like he it's it's not really an act like he just plays himself like it's really it's kind of entertaining <laughs> to to watch him in social media because it's just like yeah that's that's just him he's ornery he's just yeah, an ornery it, guy yeah <laughs> it, he, but he's also like it, it he's also really genuine in like in like the things that he does like support and stuff like i don't know it's a really interesting combination like he he doesn't hesitate to have a good time but at the same time he does 
like he does have it seems a sense of um i would dare say priorities and values that does go deeper like you know it's it's kind of like there there is something that you can kind of it's he's one of those guys that like there is something you can kind of tell there is something there that he values and he does hold to a higher standard which i i kind of i like i also like how he does not uh pulled bar like he doesn't pull back on the fact that he was terrible and <laughs> green lantern was terrible and it was the only midnight release oh, i've ever gone to in my entire yeah, life and it he, was no. awful he's completely like I, i'm not gonna say humble but he's completely completely Self-aware. okay with self-crucifying himself Right, like he, I think that's great, and it's it's so funny watching him and uh, Blake, his wife Blake Lively, because she's just as quick uh, at times on social media. Like they will get into uh, air quotes spats about things, and it's <laughs> mm-hmm. freaking hilarious watching the two of them just make fun of. You can tell that they just genuinely do actually, you know, kind of care for each other. And like, you know, it's just like being like me being in a relationship with someone who has that type that similar like poking fun at people sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you can tell that that's the type of people that they are. It's just it's kind of refreshing. Yeah. Instead of just like overly nice or just like fakey nice. It's just right. Yeah. They're, just, uh, yeah. They're, they're not like them. they're not like they're just actually they, they don't they don't try to. I mean, I'm sure there is some of it, but it's not a show. It's just like, they're like, mm-hmm. no, this is the way we are. Like, this is just our personality. Yeah. They're not like, oh, we love each other and we're only going to be nice. Though, so, Like, they, they, there's been some pretty entertaining back and forth between the two of them that it's just like, mm-hmm. wow, wow. <laughs> I like it. So my list is going to reveal something, a truth about myself um, to you guys that I don't listen to a lot of music anymore. I do when I'm streaming or when I'm gaming, I'll listen to music, but I don't, I don't follow a lot of the musicians as entertainers. So my list does not have any musicians, save one who is not officially in a musician, but he is a musician. So we'll get, save him till the end. But my number three is a comedian that's fairly, he's not new to the comedy world, but he just put out a Netflix special and it is Mike Barbiglia. And he is a really great storytelling comedian who has these incredibly long um, stories that have um, jokes that are interspersed throughout the whole thing but the joke from the very beginning gets tied into the very end of it and it's really well written and he the latest special he put out was about him becoming a dad and it's interesting because he also has a life-threatening sleepwalking disorder so he has to zip himself up in like a sleeping bag and he's just He's very, his delivery's very dry sounding. Like he's very not, there's no like big, big voices or anything like that. He's just very him, but he's got these setups that just throw you off. And it's a refreshing storytelling comedian that is really nice to hear. And I, when I'm driving to Hmm. work or anywhere else, I listen to comedy. That's kind of my, my big secret is I'm not a huge listen to the radio for music person. But Mike Berbiglia, definitely look him up. He is a really funny guy. Um, Blue, I think you and Anna would find it hilarious because there's a whole bit about Ave Maria and the Catholic Church, and he was raised Catholic and went to school and all that kind of thing. So nice. There's a whole yeah. There's a whole little bit devoted to that, which is kind of fun. But yeah, so we're up to number twos. Ted, what's your number two? All right, so my number two. I did I did go music for this one, um, but I went with the band Rush. Nice. I I am a drummer myself, and Neil Peart was just a huge influence, especially when I was starting out. And I was lucky enough to get to see them at their last three tours, and it was some of the most fun I've ever had. I could listen to their albums nonstop 
if that was a choice given to me. And just seeing them live was so, so much fun. Nice. Have you ever heard of the band called the Mars Volta? It sounds vaguely familiar, but I'm not they're, 100%. They're kind of like an experimental rock kind of group. They're... Okay. The only reason I bring it up is I worked with a drummer back in uh, back in college, and he was doing like drum competitions and stuff like that, and he was really, really big into them, and they have a really interesting um, just way of writing their music, which was kind of cool. So I was just curious huh. if you had heard of them, but Blue, number two for you. Uh, Ildris Elba. Uh, it's one of my... I, I've always really Is it because of the Dark Tower or is it because of something else? So I was a huge fan of him before that. Uh okay. he is one I, I seriously consider him one of not like one of the top actors that I've that I've seen. Uh he does an amazing job. There's a, a BBC show Luther. Uh mm-hmm. he does yeah. an amazing job in that uh and just like everything that I've seen him in he's just he's always hands down just completely blown away expectations. Um but yes, I mean the Dark Tower he he did. I I was at at first I was kind of nervous because it was a big step away from the core material, but um he he blew it out of the water. Uh just like I as soon as they announced that it was going to be him, I was like, okay, like I, I can see he has the, he has the penchant for that type of serious character. I remember before that there was rumors that he was going to possibly be, um, the next bond. And then there was also rumors that he was, he was actually kind of in the final runnings for, uh, Dr. Who, um, Oh really? Yeah. yeah. About that one. Yeah, and I was like, I was really, I was like, man, if he if he manages to pull the doctor, put like the the role of the doctor, it's like that that would have been very. He would have been more of along the lines of like the war doctor type feel, mm-hmm. but like, oh, geez, like his his he has that ability to bring such weight into the characters that he plays. Um it's just like I've I've kind of he's like he's one of those actors that you know like I'm like okay I'm just gonna go see whatever he's in like just because he tends to just make the scripts like that he has I've not seen him have a poor showing in there it seems like there's so few really really strong dramatic actors left right like comedy is the big thing that everybody has now there's mm-hmm. not really those really powerful powerhouses like yeah what we had ian mcclellan for years you he, have um like Il- Il- idris just like he um he's able to do he's able to send so much emotion through just sight like even just sight like because he's uh for example he's um i just went uh heimdall in the adventures yeah. mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. he doesn't talk that much like in all honesty he he really is a very but he's still he's still like you know when he's on screen like right. even when he doesn't say anything he has a presence that's just i mean it's just i don't know and to me like i if i remember i don't i mean i honestly don't even remember when i first kind of encountered his character like his acting but the the show Luther is the one that is just it he it's it's funny because behind the scenes uh the first episode is like the worst episode um okay because the director was all up in his business he was like no you have to do this you have to do this you have to do this you know he was constantly telling him and then you can tell the minute on set when the director was like nope you can do this and like he just let him do his thing and mm-hmm. I mean, just blew away the characters, like the the he the figure of Luther. Um, he just, I mean, like he just can embody the character. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. I think he seems to have a really old. And this is partially just that feeling from the the Dark Tower because that is the one that I know him most strongly from. I did watch Avengers, so I know his role from there, but. He seems to have a very 
John Wayne old western yes. Yes. feel to him very, in all of his roles. Very much so. Which I think that is great voice. Which mm-hmm. is what I think made um made him fit the Dark Tower actually because Oh yeah. John Wayne was the was the one of the primary ins, uh inspirations for Roland. And so like that attitude that that um uh I, I just blanked on but like that uh demeanor that he has just I mean nail just hit the nail on the head 100%. Oh yeah. Absolutely. All right. So my number 2 is another comedian, a comedian that I do not like have any problem listening to his or watching his specials over and over and over. I have watched um, his special that took place in Texas probably five or six times now, and every time just end up busting a gut. And that is for Mr. Ingle- er, Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> yeah. Fluffy. Fluffy, yeah. Oh. I, I love Fluffy. I think he, not only is he a good entertainer, like he is a funny guy just in general with all the voicing and just his ability to put sound effects into his comedy, but also he talks about, like he's an actual fairly upstanding guy and he talks about his own faults. He talks about his failures as a father. He talks about um, his bus driver in the last special, which is hilarious because his bus driver is very... Um, Oh gosh, yes. I forgot about uh, the bus driver. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um basically uh, very MAGA. His bus driver. It, yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know if I would say he, I mean he's very supportive of President well, Trump, yeah. which is yeah, all well yeah. and good. He's just definitely a he's going to tell you to tell you exactly how it is. <laughs> and he's not going to he's not going to sugarcoat things and I love how Gabriel goes into this because there's a moment they're the on the wall, bus and the wall when he, he shuts it. Uh huh. He uh, he. Gabriel accidentally drops a glass, and this bus driver is like, "Hey, you picked that up. I'm not your mama." And Gabriel has got. He's already slightly tipsy, and so he turns back to him. And he's like, "Hey, wait a second. I I I pay him." Kind of thing. <laughs> and he picks up the glass, and he's like, "Uh," and he. I can't remember the name of the bus driver, and he tries to get a hold of his attention, and and guys, bus driver's like, sit back down, and he goes in, yes sir, and goes and sits down, and then the wall goes up. He's glad she shuts the window. I'm building a wall. It's just, it's just funny. There's, and it's, it's not like they have such respect for each other. There's not really any disrespect. It's just the the rules are the rules. You follow the rules. I will get you to your places. And it was, it's great. He's so funny, and it's the fact that he works and gets along with people of different types is really nice to see in the entertainment business. But we're up to number ones now. All right, Ted. What is your number one entertainer? All right, number one entertainer is kind of um, for the same reasons that uh, Blue chose Ryan Reynolds and Idris Elba, but I'm going with Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. Very. I, I feel like he is who he is, both on screen and off screen. Whether or not it's going to be any sort of a good movie or bad movie he is going to be stealing the show he's Mm -hmm. going to have some part in it and he will be great in that part and if the most we get out of the bad movie is just some memes then i think it's worth it (laughs) i just i love the story of him in star wars yeah like i'm gonna have a purple one so i'm gonna have a purple lightsaber they're like no no one has a purple lightsaber I'm going to have a purple lightsaber. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, he was was, forced to get a purple lightsaber for Mace Windu? That that was one of his conditions for him to be Mace Windu. Because he wanted to see himself when they did like the big shots with all the Jedis everywhere. He wanted to point to himself and say, there I am. (laughs) Oh my gosh, really? Yep. That's funny. I didn't know that. I just remember when it first came out, we were all like... Is he going to drop the MF bomb? Like, like <laughs> what is going is, to happen? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that would have been awesome. 
Samuel <laughs> Jackson. I just, I can't get over the whole, just like anybody says his name, it goes straight back to Die Hard. I can't help it. There's that, and then there's also uh, <laughs> his reading of <laughs> Go to Sleep. Go to Sleep. Yeah. 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 I love that. <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness! All and you right, can't Blue. forget snakes on a plane. Yeah, I never saw that <laughs> I one. Either. <laughs> Why <Wow, that mother laughs> <on a> plane? <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, no. My number one is uh, actually Jason Momoa. Uh, and I, really? I, oh nice. yeah. Like, like okay. it's just like. Oh my god! Like I, I just love the characters that he plays. Like I just, I was introduced to him with Stargate uh, when he was on Stargate Atlantis, and like I've mm-hmm. just kind of just passively just followed everything that he's done, just because it's he, he has such like a, uh, he's really just down to earth. It seems like in like again on social media, he's he's well currently what he's doing right now is he's doing a series of Super Bowl. Uh, advertising, I think it was like Rocket Mortgage so, or something like that. Oh my god, it is hilarious. Not gonna <laughs> lie, I was a little disturbed because Blue Blue will share like gifts and videos and tweets with me <laughs> throughout the day that he finds funny. <laughs> and I'm at work and I get a ping <laughs> and I open this up and there's a there's somebody in a bathtub reading a romance oh, novel. Oh, it's getting juicy. <laughs> And yeah, it's you see the like he pulls Juicy the book girl. down slowly, so you're like, oh my god, that's not a woman, that's a man. That is Jason Momoa uh-huh. reading a romance novel, uh-huh. and he's, he's in a tub tr- with, with like, all oh like gosh, all these bubbles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just really confused at first because I'm like, why is Blue sending me like a bubble bathtub romance novel gift? Like that's not normally oh speed. It was good. Oh, uh-huh. Jason Momoa. It's getting juicy. The problem, the problem I have, like, I like Jason Momoa. I also, I have a coworker who's a little obsessed about him mm. and has had beers with him because apparently he's oh, really? been to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In particular, there's a brewery in Boulder that he likes to go to. Well, and he and also is really big there. on rock climbing. That's one of his big yeah. passions. Yeah. Yeah, so he and Boulder is a really good place mm-hmm. to go for that kind of thing because there's a lot of different areas nearby, and she just won't stop. Like, I can't blame her. That, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna full disclosure. A, don't blame her at all. Like, nope. I mean, he's pretty, but come on. No, no, no. Yeah, don't blame her. She's she's 100 okay. percent validated in my eyes on on that. <laughs> Okay, well, if you knew her, you would be less... Pro- probably. I mean, that's the way it goes for most people and me, but... Um, <laughs> no, like, he... And, like, he's uh, he's really big. Like, he he really does... You, like, he's like he reminds me a little bit of... Uh, I think it's Rufio? Mark Rufalo, Rufio? Um, Ruf- Ruffalo. Yeah. Ruffalo, whatever. Ruffalo. Hulk. Hulk. Um, he uses a lot of times he will be using his, his platform to bring awareness to things like, uh, like currently right now, his, one of his big things is the whole environment in Hawaii, uh, with this, uh, with this massive telescope that they're, they're basically like strip mining an island. And like, he is completely unfiltered when a when he gets going on stuff like that which is actually really refresh like regardless of if you agree with it or not um to me it's refreshing because you can tell that it's something that he is passionate about and you know it's it's just so rare again um it's so rare to find someone who's willing to go out and be like no this is me this is you know this platform is i've been i've been you know i've been able to gather this following and i'm going to use it and not for something like i'm going to get more clicks like this is something that is that is bigger than him um and that's kind of the same for uh ryan reynolds as well ryan reynolds will do some like he'll do that his hit reynolds big thing is often like uh kids like he does a lot of uh kids with cancer and you know make a wish foundation Mm -hmm. and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um 
but like Momoa is, yeah, like his big thing right now is the the whole thing with yeah, oh, that's right, Dino. Thanks. They're I guess they're it's a sacred religious site, and they're just kind of like there's there's a huge there's huge issues with what's going on, but um, but yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where it's like you know again, regardless of if you agree with his point of view and his stance, it's the fresh, it's just like the refreshing him being a human and being like this is wrong and this is my opinion of why that is right and he actually like he backs it up like he actually tries to explain it and tries to have a conversation around it instead of just like you know screaming about it which is again just something that you know i find refreshing because it's again someone's trying to ha- open a conversation about something that they find important and it's not a I'm going to attack you because you disagree. It's let's have a conversation about why we disagree and see if we can come to a, you know, a resolution or a compromise that but make both sides, you know, happy because he's he's not against doing the like for his thing. He's not against having the telescope. He's just like this is my, you know, this is my ancestry. I'm, I'm, you know, these are people that I am, I am related to by blood and by her, uh, heritage. And he's like, can we not just maybe, I don't know, put the tel- telescope somewhere that's not in a sacred space? <laughs> like that's, right. like, you know, so, and again, I just, I, I appreciate that, that, uh, when people are like that, like they come at it and they're like, no, look, it's important. We get that. But this is also important so yeah it's nice it's nice that there are those who stand out there for Mm -hmm. something that's more personal to them rather than just like the big hot topics because you see a Mm. lot of you'll see a lot of actors uh, mark does a lot of uh well recently he's doing countdown with ted but like his big thing is uh environmental uh things and so he's actually he's actually joined up with jason on a couple things for the whole i think it's is it Mana Mana Key, uh, Mana Kea, Mana Kea, uh, the the mm-hmm. telescope plans for that location. So like, there's there's actually come some double like dipping on their parts on that, but it's just yeah, it's again, um, it's just it's really cool to see again someone who's like, hey, look, these both sides are both sides are right, but neither one of them are wrong. So let's try to let's you know let's try to get to a compromise that so we can get both sides in on in on it and working together it's interesting because mana you like you have mana loa and mana kea and Mm -hmm. they're both on the big island and um yeah the big island is the cultural historical center yeah and they're their people there's a there's a lot of political tension that is going on that is above like just it's not just the whole you know hey it's a sacred religious site there's also my under my 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 limited understanding is that a lot of the political tension is being exasperated because um again you know i i I, if i remember correctly there it's the the native population is not wanting it and the the political powers are not really listening and so there's a whole you know butting of heads over that that kind of concept again as well so it's Mm, which is a bit of a common problem for especially well especially that area but also just just in general just yeah it's just always it's always a fight it's a fight to hold on to things correct i mean there there were things um cultural centers that are just getting taken over a lot of native centers that are just Mm -hmm. getting taken over by a lot of different groups at this point which is not good because then you lose them and you don't get them back right yeah and that and that's again it's like and that's the thing with like the whole thing with the telescope is like they're like no let's do it let's do it but let's do it on not this place (laughs) right let's let's find a place to be fair yeah having been on the big island now this is just this is just my um, non-native two cents. I understand why the scientists who are non-natives wanted that location because mm-hmm. that location is on the desert side and it's very open and there's not a lot of 
mm-hmm. uh, populous around that area. So it is a very dark and I would say a pretty ideal location to put a, a large telescope. So I understand from the scientist perspective of why they're wanting it there. I don't think they should put it there. Yeah, I'm more on the Islander side on that one. Yeah. So beyond the political talk and going back into top three a little bit, my number one, I'm going to go real old school for this. You ready? Dude. This was the very first person I thought of. This is the f- person I have adored since I was a child. And I find him, I find him just to be not only a great comedian physically and um like verbally he's a great deliverer but he's also multi-talented he dances he sings um he's actually part of a barbershop group and i have personally met his one of his best friends um who happens to live in wichita kansas of all places and who is a jazz singer and that is good old dick van dyke oh Hmm. dick van dyke is probably one of the most well-rounded entertainers of all time the man did so many different types of roles dancing roles that slapstick comedy that you get in like mary poppins and then you had the dick van dyke show and he's he's really good at pulling a person into a conversation making them feel welcome but also making them laugh while doing it and i i find him just charming he's a charming guy and granted they're he has his own issues and I know he's been struggling a lot with cancer in the last couple of years as well, but he is definitely just kind of that legend to me of what a great entertainer should like strive for in your own particular field. Like you can, you could be a singer. You just, I, you should be a well-rounded singer. Try other things. Don't just do the one thing. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice to, to have a guy like that out there as kind of a, a call to a golden era of actors. So we are to the point in the show where we do our also rants. Did you guys have any people that kind of popped up in your mind as we were doing it or people that uh, you would also put on your list as great entertainers? Ted? Um, I mean, I was pretty close to putting Ryan Reynolds and Idris Elba on my list as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, double good shout choices. Out to them, good I choices. Guess. <laughs> Blue, do you have any? Uh, yeah, like I know Ron Williams, uh, just simply because like the his his story, like from from a just a realistic like down to earth person, um, and then also I, I also Jason Statham, uh, his his story of like how he got to where he is is just very entertaining um like the the whole like the whole thing like the, didn't he wash cars like wasn't yeah, that his thing? no that was harrison ford uh okay. jason statham was actually so uh the movie uh, i think it was lock stock and two smoking barrels where there's i think that's the one uh where he's the intro is him doing a swindling of the the watches on the street that's actually oh, what he was he, in pickpocket. No, no, he was he he and his dad were actually uh street uh not artists, grifters? but they're dri- grifters, yeah. No. And he actually was the one who got one over on Guy Ritchie. Like that's how he got introduced <laughs> with Guy Ritchie. He he fast talked him into buying I, I want to say it was a watch. And like that's how the two got introduced, and then the uh, Richie was so impressed that he actually went back and found him, and was like, "No, you're gonna you you need to come, you know, do this this role with this sh- this movie," and that's uh, that's that's really kind of his breakthrough. Uh, Harrison Ford was the guy who was washing cars and ran and yeah. like bumped into um, George Lucas. That's what it was. And that's kind of a he got introduced. And then, um, yeah, Jackie Chan is another one that chat's throwing out there. It's just there's there's just like so many so many big names that are like yeah. once you start looking at like how they got into stuff, it's really kind of funny slash mm-hmm. kind of cool about it. I have a duo that I, I prefer them together. But the one separate is fine. Like, once they're separate, it's okay. But The Rock and Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah. 
it's, those two yeah, are the commercials hilarious together. The commercials oh my are god! So... Not even like like the who am Halloween I? Who am I? Bit. <laughs> the Halloween bit's the best one. <laughs> yes. No, get get out of here. Here's a here's a real size candy bar. Here's here's a one for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. <laughs> I like The Rock in general. I think he's, like, Dwayne Johnson is, he's not, like, the most amazing actor, but he's a pretty good actor. Well, yeah. he's another and one that's just, roles. like, he's just down, like, he's just genuine. Yeah. Like, you could yeah. tell he's, he's just, just like, sure. yeah. Oh, my gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot so, about the Halloween and, bit. <laughs> right? With the fanny pack? The fanny pack. No, no. Oh, get, my gosh. Get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, another really good one. We've gone through a lot of male entertainers. Um, Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Amazing. A good one. Uh, Devil Wears Prada. The other one that I oh, saw in gosh. chat just a second ago is Amelia Clark. Yeah. Well, she was, she's a good one. Um, actually, you know, I'm going to get, I might get a little grief for this one, but I, uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, just really? simply, okay. yeah, simply not, not because I've, like, so to be a hundred percent clear, I'm not like a hundred percent a fan of what like her singing or anything like that, but like actually how she has managed to bounce from genre to genre without losing steam. Yeah. Like if you mm-hmm. if you sure. think about like what like just from a logistic standpoint what she has done, I'm yeah. like, okay, that's freaking impressive. Like yeah, she's played that game perfectly. <laughs> She went from like what was it? She started out in the country sphere, she jumped into uh, was it pop? Pop, and then yep. she, now she's like I mean now she's then she did a stint of R and B, and now she's coming back. Like I mean, it's just like she's yeah she's and not she has afraid to branch out right. But the but again the thing is is like her support like her her uh, fan base fan base has never diminished. It's only yeah. grown, like, like, uh-huh. and you usually like you see other people do similar things, and it's like they just like they, you know. I think it's just the fact that she comes, she doesn't come across fake. Like you get some right. of those really right. singers who come across really, really fake in their songs, or just fake in their performances, and it's just about the, it's just mm-hmm. about the attention. It's Taylor yeah. doesn't necessarily come across that way, which I think is really nice. I don't know if she is that way, and she's just a better actress than right. others, yeah. or if she's yeah. genuine. But, but she I, really I'll comes be, across as a I genuine I will be honest. Person. That was because of the logistic standpoint. She was actually one of my considerations because I was like, like I, per- I don't. I mean, I don't have really yay or nay feelings about it but like Mm -hmm. just like again the whole thing of like actually changing like i mean it to put it into perspective of like streaming for video game players it's like switching you know switching from one you're you're a destiny streamer and now you're yeah now you're uh, gonna go to um animal crossing (laughs) yeah you know like i mean it's it's there were there's a major change and you don't see a lot of success usually when that change happens and and she's she's managed to pull it off that's it's amazing um so who's the other female who's the lady who does uh frozen she's the oh adina menzel yeah that one she okay because she was bone to pick broadway right to pick yeah yeah she was originally broadway um amazing voice she has a very very unique voice that is incredibly difficult to mimic because she she has one of the highest belts in broadway and if you are not trained to have a belt like that or are naturally gifted to have a belt like that you're going to ruin your voice Mm -hmm. i have spent so many times sitting with a small girl who wants to sing the frozen song and just having to tell her that Yes, you can sing this now, but I, I, you cannot continue to sing like this as you're getting older because mm-hmm. once a, a young girl's voice starts to change and hormones and everything, she's going to ruin her vocal cords. Mm. So I, I love Adina Menzel. She's hilarious. She was great in Rent. She originated the role of, um, oh, what's her name? Not Mimi. Mimi was the other character. I'm blanking. Anyway, Maureen. Mm, she mm-hmm. uh, originated the role of Maureen and is hilarious in it and has done some really great things Broadway-wise, but I I hesitate to put her in the great entertainer category for a few reasons. As, as Black Flag is pointing out, so you tell them to let it go. 
I uh, I need to let it go because it's been it's, it's it's already thing. stop. Anyway, um, Ted, you said you had another female entertainer. Yeah, um, Jennifer Hale. Jennifer Hale. Why yeah. does that name sound familiar? Because she's been in everything from the old Spider-Man cartoon back in like the nineties. She was Commander Shepard in the Mass Effect trilogy. She was Bastila in Knights of the Old oh, Republic. She's been in voice everything. Actress. One of those gotcha. voices that you know but you don't know who it is. She's just right. been everywhere. It's like the Mark Hamill. Super humble. Oh yeah. Okay. Nice. So I have a movie actress, and the main reason she's on my also rand is because she did Ocean's 8, and she mimicked, not mimicked, she brought in a character that was supposed to be the female version of the Brad Pitt character in the original Ocean series, and she did did his mannerisms so stinking well like she studied the snot out of him and just created this other female version of this character which is so charming and so much fun and that is Kate Blanchett mm, she is yeah. an amazing actress to watch she was in and, Lord of the Rings right yep mm-hmm. she was another Galadriel. person who I don't think has ever had like a bad role or has performed badly yeah absolutely all right, I think we should wrap this up because it sounds like we can just go down so <laughs> many, so many different lanes with this. It's a kind of a fun topic to get into and just talk about kind of our favorites with that. But thank you guys for joining us this week, and thank you for downloading the show and leaving us any sort of review you can on Twitter, iTunes. Just shout it out there a little bit if you have a chance. It helps us out. It helps our ratings go up a little bit in the show and lets other people find us. And remember. Everybody loves a list. <laughs>